Hello, my name is Anton Kalonin, and today we are going to talk how OpenCog and SingularityNet and Supervised Language Learning project is using graphs supported by AIGEN's graph subsystem. To start with this, let's go to graphs demo. And um, for starters, let's explore capabilities of AIGEN's uh, graphics framework. And for example, let's consider OpenCog atom type hierarchy, which is present in, in, in GitHub. And it, and it renders different sorts of atoms and nodes and links entire hierarchy of hierarchy of objects used in OpenCog. And this file can be loaded and render it as a graph. So let's see what can we do with this graph. First of all, we can uh, play with slicing. Uh, slicing can be vertical, horizontal, and slicing can be applied for the situation when different types of nodes are present on the graph. On the open core atom type hierarchy, there is no different node types, so every node is just a type. So we are not interested about this. We'll see how slicing is working with other graphs later. Uh, further, we can change node radius. So you can nodes larger, or we can make them smaller. Let's keep them this way. And also we can uh, select the layout. So if we specify a threshold for layout, then layout is uh, created using the forces. And the now amount of uh, threshold drives uh, when we stop iterations. So if threshold is high, then uh, iterative layout using different using forces pulling and pushing nodes uh, apart and together so that uh, links are pulling nodes uh, together and uh, each node pushes another node apart. So, and in the iterative proce process, nodes are trying to re rearrange themselves on screen and they continue until they reach a uh, threshold uh, on uh, changes of, of the um, positions of the nodes on the next iteration. So if we decrease threshold, then nodes become more and more sparsely distributed across the screen. And also we have balance. So balance means that if the balance is low, then nodes are uh, being pulled by links uh, stronger and they are pushed uh, apart less. So if we increase threshold, pushing apart becomes uh, more important than pulling together. So nodes are becoming spread more evenly. So we can play with this as well. Also, uh, we can turn the uh, uh, layout off and if the threshold is turned off the nodes are arranged accordingly to some uh, kind of natural order. Natural order means that horizontally nodes are sorted alphabetically so we see atom, arithmetic, boolean at the beginning alphabetical sorting and we have uh, unordered and value and variable at the end. So horizontal direction implies alphabet. And vertical direction implies rank or reputation or importance of the node in respect to other nodes. Like uh, the more linkages node receives from the other nodes, the greater its importance. Like we see that there is a link node which has a lot of connections from the other nodes and it's the, at the very top. And because it itself, it, it links atom, so the atom gets all importance that is received by link. So reputation is flowing through the link to atom, so link and atom are residing at the same level. Uh, but if we select something below, we'll see that this particular node has no any incoming links, so its rank or reputation is low and it stays at the very bottom. 
So if we don't have threshold set for a force directed layout, then nodes are uh, spread using this natural uh, sorting. Uh, further, if we uh, want to, if we still want to apply force layout, we can do it in different ways. We can say that the force layouts uh, layout is applied on only horizontally. So in this case, in this case, vertical sorting given the rank uh, stays. So we still have atom link and value at the top and a bunch of uh, non-linked nodes uh, at the bottom. If we change uh, power directions to vertical, then we have quite different picture. So the nodes are keeping alphabetic sorting. So we see nodes starting with A at the uh, left on the left and everything starting with V on the right. And if we select both directions of force layout of force direction, then we see nodes are spread it, spread it evenly across the strain. And finally we have node filter here. So here we can do the search. For example, if I'm interested about inheritance, I am type it in, plus enter, and here I see inheritance link and all its connections. And also I can uh, use this filter implicitly by clicking on nodes. So if I click on order it link, it is automatically substituted in, into the filter. And now I see order it, order it link and unorder it link because it's matching the text filter. So uh, all nodes uh, matching the filter and all neighbors of these nodes are appearing on screen. So that was just discussion, discussion on how we can play with different properties of graphs uh, given open clock atom type, type hierarchy as example. Now let's move to Singularity Net and Open Cock and supervised language learning project graphs. There are few sorts of graphs, mutual information, word senses, uh, lean grammar, categories and parses. So let's view them uh, in some order. But first of all, let's consider the source file used to produce these graphs. So that's what we call uh, proof of concept English corpus. So it has some bunch of uh, simple sentences with uh, uh, some words in these sentences. And we are what we are trying to do uh, in this uh, with these graphs. We are trying to render different linguistic uh, structures and linguistic uh, data extracted from this text programmatically. So the first thing that we can extract from this text is what we call mutual information. So what mutual information does, it takes the text and it takes all sentences of the text and it breaks the uh, sentences into words and it comp computes mutual information between the words. Like if the words are occurring uh, together in the sentence, they are given some bump of mutual information. So the words that are staying in the sentences uh, cl close one to another more often than other words, then these two words are getting more mutual information. So in this graph, we can uh, check the neighbors of the words. Like, for example, if we take word of, then we can see that it has uh, uh, highly uh, linked neighbors, board and directors. Like, I think that's because of sentence like board of directors is used more than once. And other words are getting uh, more thin connections, so they are uh, repeating together uh, less often. Uh, okay, uh, let's try something else. Let's take uh, once. Okay. Once uh, is linked to, I believe, his. To make it more clearer, let's turn uh, force directed layout. Let's turn it both directions so the words of interest are staying in the middle. So we see word once 
and it has a significant amount of mutual information in respect to word her uh, and the word uh, and so the ones the her is more uh, and and daughter so something was uh, repeating often with uh, daughter and her uh, with once uh, word once was repeating often enough with words daughter and her by some reason we can explore this text so that's uh, and we can remove the filter and see it all again and we can improve the force directed layout um, so that's mutual information based on that mutual information we do the parses so what we do in these parses we uh, take a sentence like a mom is a human and we create links so let's say uh, in the sentence a mom is a human every uh, word is enumerated like uh, left wall or left boundary of the sentence a given number of zero a is one mom is two uh, is is three a is four and so forth so here we are given given sentence like uh, a mom, mom is, is human, a human. And uh, further we can have more passes. That's not parts of the entire text. Uh, here we have just a few sentences, but we can substitute the whole text here. And by the way, we can see how the full parses are looking like. Let me put it here. So here is the whole bunch of parses. We can read these parses and render these parses in the graph. Um, okay. And the parses can be rendered in a few different ways. Here we just take uh, the links across the parses and we see which words um, are linked more often. So it's most like mutual information that we have seen before, but it's more, uh, uh, but it's not about co-occurrence in the sentence, it's about uh, linkage in the sentence. So we see that the left wall is linked with is often enough, uh, we can select the node and we can see relative uh, strengths of uh, linkages of a uh, given word uh, compared to other words. Uh, here we see that most of verbs, for example, are linked with left wall. And left wall is uh, often uh, strongly linked to the period in the end, for example. Another kind of uh, looking at the parses is uh, looking words with sentences. So, phrases with words. So, here we see different phrases like mom like cakes and all words that are uh, occurring. Uh, together with mom likes cakes. We can take word cake and see all the sentences that uh, are containing the word cake and we can play with different layouts. So we can have all words at the top and sentences at the bottom. We can play with uh, layouts. So we have more smooth distribution, distribution of nodes across the stream. And we also can uh, view the parses so we see both phrases with linked words, everything. So the picture is more complex, but again we can use filter to select uh, some sentences. And uh, we can also play with uh, turning different nodes and links, by the way. So we can turn off the phrases. So now no phrases rendered and we can turn off the uh, words. So only the, word, the, only the uh, selected word is used. So if we remove selection of this word, we see only the phrases. Now we get words again. And also we can remove particular sorts of links, like we can remove words, uh, links between phrases and words. So we see only um, uh, linkage links between the words and we can remove uh, links between the words and see only the 
uh, links between sentences and the words. Uh, well, so that was about viewing the parses on the graphical representation. Uh, another in kind of information that we can render with this graph uh, graphics framework is uh, word sense disambiguation data. Uh, word sense disambiguation process is intended to split uh, different uh, meanings of the same word in different contexts. Like, let's say we have word board, which can be either board of directors, board of ship, or whiteboard in school. And these words are appearing in context of uh, different words, like sense board of directors is appearing with words company, directors, enterprise. The word board as board of a ship appears together with sail and ship. Bo whiteboard as a board appears with chalk, school, white and dried. Similarly, and that's by the way called um, um, semantic disambiguation because all meanings of board are still under category of nouns. So that's just a noun board with different uh, meanings. Uh, we still have another kind of ambiguity, it's about um, grammatical ambiguity, where we have word so, which can be either noun and indicate some tool which can be used to cut the wood, or it can be a verb, uh, past, uh, pre uh, past uh, tense of the uh, uh, verb C. And Different uh, kinds of saw appears in different contexts, like saw, like a wood, appears together with wood, and saw, like him or her, appears with words clearly, her, yesterday, him, etc. Et uh, again, we can play here with uh, nodes, like we can remove uh, visibility of nodes that uh, are not interested to us, like we remove sentences and we see only the words. And we can remove words, so we see only the sentence. And we can play with different links, like we remove links between uh, words and senses and see only the uh, links between uh, different senses of the same word. Or we can uh, do it the other way around. We can just see only the links that are indicating particular sense. And also we can play with di different layouts, like we can remove force directed layout and uh, have the uh, hierarchical arrangement of the nodes or we can turn the force directed layout and have the arrangement only horizontal. So we have some, we see some natural hierarchy of the uh, word uh, and sense usage in our graph. So that was about uh, disambiguation graphs. Now let's move to uh, what we have, uh, what we can do with these parses that we were seeing right now. Once we have parses, we use a grammar learner component to infer categories of words based on the uh, parses and uh, different uh, uh, context of the words and in particular in our project uh, when we do the categorization uh, and classification of the words and further grammar induction uh, which we'll see later we use uh, not a word embeddings we use not a word context but we use what we call disjuncts so um, disjunct is something like if uh, there is a uh, let me give you example uh, so, if there is a word liked in the sentence, then the word liked uh, has three connect different connections. We have word liked to mom, we have liked to cake, and liked to before. So, uh, the um, combination of mom on the left, cake on the right, and before on the right three words with different positions relative to the word of interest, uh, the word liked. So uh, the whole context of the word liked uh, called disjunct. And in fact, uh, this kind of disjunct uh, 
uh, could see you different words like mom loved cake or mom love cake or mom like cake or mom eats cake so different uh, words can suit the same disjunct and in this case it's suitable to talk about lexical entry so there is a unit of uh, the uh, words on the left and on the right that de describe particular uh, context which can be filled particular part of speech like a verb in the in given sense or a noun of different category so we are consider we, uh, we consider every wor word in the parse we identify these junks of this word and then we try to classify these words and to build uh, category three like this one and we can clearly see that given the same uh, corpus uh, where is it uh, let me go back to the corpus here is the corpus that we actually parse it and that we actually use it to build this uh, categorial tree we have see some we can see some interesting branches so some branches are not good because our technology is not perfect but some uh, branches are quite reasonable for example we, we can see the uh, categorial branch daughter which has uh, as child nodes daughter and son and then node accumulating daughter and son is child node in respect to node accumulating dead daughter mom and son so dad and mom are being added to the here are to the tree also we see we, we see hammer saw and telescope and i guess the saw is implied uh, as a, a noun here not a verb and we see that actually hammer and telescope are more specific category unifying uh, hammer and telescope together so both hammer and telescope are kind of tools and again uh, as in all previous graphs we can do some fu funny things about the properties of the graph we can change the we can make it uh, looking that way or that way and shape and play with different layouts that we discussed before and also we can uh, explore particular branches of hierarchy and see the uh, nodes of our interest interest more closely and by the way if we uh, don't uh, need uh, our categorial tree to be rooted we can remove a rooted flag and just see different uh, subgraphs uh, place it separately and we can add that add, add force layout to this so the nodes are pushed apart to greater extent something like this okay so that was about categorial tree now the most interesting part of the story in the end of our language learning process is grammar so when we have the parses like that and when we have uh, categories learned from these parses like that we uh, can infer the grammar and the grammar is uh, actually uh, the standard lean grammar dictionary exported so it can be loaded into lean parser of lean grammar project and then uh, this uh, dictionary enables to do actual parse of the text in the in given language of course if we have uh, trained data to infer the grammar uh, substantially rich to cover all uh, possible uh, combinations of words in the test corpus so this kind of graph is more complex and it has layers it has four layers actually at the layer number one we see words so we see, we see word wood and by the way let's use our uh, tools like uh, let's see here so we have categories so let's say we remove everything except words so here we have words only now after besides words we have categories of words 
So here are categories. So we, we have identified in this simple corpus one, two, three, four, five categories of words. Uh, then uh, after categories we have something that we call disjuncts. So disjuncts are combinations of different uh, uh, contexts that are describing each category. So like uh, it can be th thought that if we have uh, uh, let's say let me consider something simple oh, okay let's do this so if we have category C01 then this category C01 is used in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in 7 uh, grammatical contexts and each grammatical context is a disjunct and this disjunct in turn has some connectors for example this particular disjunct has only one connector and connector is something that points to uh, some neighbor cluster for example if we have cluster C01 and uh, it has disjunct con consisting of uh, C02, C01 connector so it points to C02, C01 connector. Um, uh, so the layer number, let's remove something, the rest. So the layer number three is layer of connectors. Connectors are grouped by disjuncts and disjuncts are used by categories and categories are representing words. Also we can play with different links. So let's say we want to remove all links between uh, uh, connectors to disjuncts. We can remove links between words and categories. That uh, was all about the graphs, uh, how they look. And now let's move to uh, the code, how it's <coughs> actually working. So here we see the source code of the page that we've been looking at. Uh, it uses jQuery. So jQuery is used just for general purpose HTML, HTML rendering. We also use AI agents AL JavaScript, which has some basic functions uh, used by AI agents graph subsystem. So the AI agents graph subsystem is the one that is used by OpenCock and Singularity Net and supervised language learning project. Uh, let's uh, consider how we render, for example, the parses. So that uh, let's let's back to grammar. Grammar is more complex and it will be more interesting. Okay, so here is the grammar and let's search for grammar. Grammar, grammar. Okay, so we have function do grammar graph. So that's so that's bound to button. Button do grammar graph view lean grammar so then if we click on the link view lean grammar we have the lean grammar graph fair enough so let's see how this function works so this function uh, calls AI agents graph request graph pop-up which uh, actually renders this pop-up so this pop-up is rendered by uh, the request graph pop-up. It has the title, it, it, it has uh, ID of the placeholder HTML control. Let's look at this, uh, where is it? Uh, it should be somewhere in the HTML file. Uh, well, it's, it seems like it's created behind this scene. Uh, so we can actually use different uh, HTML IDs 
Now it has reference to the control, HTML control that is used to load the file name of the uh, Lean Grammar dictionary file. And then it has function builder. So what happens by request graph pop up at some point, it tries to get this path. It tries to load the file and the file is loaded. It passes the text of the file into the uh, builder function and the builder function continues initialization of the eagents graph framework. Uh, we can specify configuration and in, in this configuration we can identify multiple things. First of all, we identify colors. So remember, uh, here we have different colors of the nodes, like words are white, uh, categories are yellow, uh, disjuncts are green, and uh, uh, connectors are violet. So here, oops, wrong, wrong tab, let's close this, close. So here, so we have these different colors, and the different colors are set uh, for links, like plus minus vc cd uh, uh, as well as for nodes like connector word is junk uh, then uh, also we have uh, slide and by the way if we don't specify uh, colors for links and nodes they are rendered with default color like yellow for color is default for nodes and blue color is default for links further we can specify the order of slicing Remember that we have uh, connectors, then disjuncts, then uh, categories, then uh, words. So here we have this connector, disjunct, category, word. Further, we can have option to have links labeled. So you see, so we have uh, labels of links like WC is word category and CD is category to disjunct. So the links are labeled, we have the background set, let's check, yeah, we have some gray background, nice. And then we have an important function, build links. So build links does uh, something to take the text and build the links. And links is the most important thing to do, so the links are uh, just uh, uh, typically triplets like source, origin and link type and uh, optionally there could be a link weight fourth field and uh, the link weight is default is one but if you specify it it can be any number so if there is a number specified for uh, uh, the link then the link is rendered with particular uh, thickness of the connection between the nodes. And that grammar build links is a uh, very specific code. It's specific uh, to particular file format. So here we just parse, uh, par parse uh, uh, grammar in uh, Lean Grammar dictionary format that we use in supervised language learning project. Um, let's uh, go further and see how we can call uh, graphs. So then, uh, after we have built the links, we may need to specify orders of the nodes. So it takes to, to compute the order or uh, rank of the node on graph, which can be used for vertical sorting. Uh, and, and by the way, besides vertical sorting, the uh, rank of the node uh, identifies color saturation, like the nodes that are uh, um, uh, having higher uh, rank or higher connectivity with child nodes, they are rendered in more saturated color and they are placed high. Like we have category CO3 uh, more saturated and uh, higher than other categories. Similarly, we have um, uh, connectors CO3, CO5 more often used than others and it's uh, more saturated and placed higher than the others. And the same we see with disjuncts. Uh, for the words, there is no difference between because all words are uh, uh, having no incoming links, so they um, there is just hang down, hang below the categories. So we have uh, built the orders, and um, 
graph order class or graph order object computes uh, order of, of links in few different ways like we can compute order based on the directed links using uh, liquid reputation uh, or liquid rank algorithm uh, also we can provide some extra options for nodes so the nodes is not necessary to, uh, necessary to get filled but we can add more flavor to our graph if we add properties to node like uh, we can uh, add type uh, so we can uh, the type is identified by is property and also there is a key which can be used for sorting so we can ad adjust key and is for uh, some particular uh, nodes that can be used for graph rendering and once we are done with links uh, orders and nodes and have config ready we uh, uh, let the builder function to return all this guys nodes links orders and config config may be omitted orders may be omitted nodes may the nodes may be omitted so uh, the uh, links must be provided and finally we can specify what kind of slicing we want either we want vertical slicing or horizontal slicing uh, by the way uh, i forgot to mention that slicing can be horizontal so that's not very useful in this given case we have uh, connectors on the left this joins uh, closer to the middle then we have categories uh, categories uh, uh, further on the right and we have words on the very right mm, but i'm not sure if this kind of arrangement is practical uh, here so I would better stick to vertical slicing. Uh, and, and also we provide default layout threshold. So these parameters are used as default and if we call uh, once we call Lean Grammar, these default parameters are used to create default graph. Uh, that's uh, one example. Let's consider uh, for another example how the that's the simpler one. Census graph. Remember, we use it uh, word census, and we have uh, and let's see. Let's actually see the source file. So the source file is. Uh, Let's go there. Okay, so this is the census demo file. It's pretty simple. We have just uh, different uh, words and we have uh, their meanings and we have uh, properties of these words specific to these meanings. So uh, let's uh, go to the code. So we have do census graph function, which is called when we click on viewer census and um, here we also uh, load the, provide the uh, HTML ID to get the value and pass uh, at path and then we provide the builder function which creates the config which uses text to uh, build links and beside while building links uh, also the nodes can be filled by the build links algorithm and then we just create the orders additionally based on the links that we have and then we return the nodes with their properties the links uh, the orders and again config you can and we specify some different properties for the graph like there is no slicing, there is different la la layout threshold, there is different layout balance and layout. there is different uh, combination of you know, the, the forces used for uh, force directed layout. Uh, and if you are interested you can get this 
source code and explore it and try to use it in your applications. So that's all what I wanted to cover on SingularityNet and OpenCock on Supervised Language Learning Graphs demo. If you are interested, then uh, go to SingularityNet.io uh, site and uh, check uh, LangLearn section of the site and uh, stay in touch and uh, keep tracking our updates. Cheers, goodbye.